I won't leave much to you beyond my death. A name inside a book, perhaps a breath from sores and musty, muddy mold, I sprouted beauty, meanings new from old. These are some of the best known verses of the Romanian poetic landscape and the heritage of one of the best and most famous Romanian poets. My name is Daniel Ionita and in this uh, session number six of Romanian Poetry in English, we will discover the poetry of Tudor Arghezi. I mentioned in the past poets I would include in my top ten. Well, Arghezi for me would be in the top five and, if I'm in the mood, even in the top three. I'll explain. May 1880, July 1967. Arghezi was a poet, prose writer, editor, publisher, certainly one of the most, most striking literary figures of the interwar period. A powerful and complex personality, he implicated himself politically uh, through his publishing work and was arrested both before and after the installation of the communist regime. He was rehabilitated in uh, the 1950s, which brought accusations of collaboration with the regime. However, the quality of his poetry remains beyond dispute. He was awarded the National Prize for Poetry in uh, 1936 and 1946, as well as the International Herder Poetry Prize in 1965. When he appeared on the literary scene in the mid-1920s, Arghezi struck like a meteorite. He created a huge impression, even though the era was full of amazing poets. Ion Minulescu, Lucian Blaga, Ion Pilat, Octavian Goga, Dimitri Angel, Demostene Botez, Ion Barbu, to name a few. He was even proclaimed the greatest poet since Eminescu. Sure enough, Almost immediately, other poets and literary critics started to contest these claims. Being mentioned in the same breath with the morning star of the Romanian poetry landscape seemed blasphemous to many. And while his poetry was extremely popular, uh, 100 years ago poets were like rock stars, the literary critics were ambivalent. He paid no mind. He wrote as he saw fit, reinventing himself with every opportunity, sometimes even within the same volume. Nicolae Manolescu notes that Arghezi can play all the chords of the poetic register in a world where most poets are monochord. He is a one-man band of poetry and does well at whatever he touches. In the Romanian poetic pantheon, I believe that only Nina Cassian comes close to him in this brilliant all-rounder category, if you like. Arghezi begins by giving a nod to lyricists before him, Eminescu, Alexandru Macedonski, George Koshbuk, though he does it in symbolist fashion. He quickly becomes famous, infamous, for his seemingly rebellious, grotesque and decadent poems some touches there of Baudelaire, but also of Maeterlinck and Rainer Maria Rilke. He masters an aesthetic of the grotesque. Then, then there are his spiritual poems in the cycle of the Psalms. A totally different register and still masterpieces. Here Arghezi strains the tension by swinging between belief and unbelief. If Baudelaire could not choose between Satan and God, uh, if Blake and Poe could not decide between darkness and light, Arghezi cannot choose either. Not with any finality. He seeks a palpable God, a direct manifestation, a happening. He even dares God to a fight. Still, still I ask, isn't this the ultimate act of faith? 
shortly after the installation of the communist regime, his work is labeled decadent and exemplifying bourgeois putrefaction, quote unquote. He came back onto the literary scene in 1956 with a volume, Him to the Human Being, which bows to the socialist realism pressures of the day. But still, despite the compromise, his poetry remains good. From 1962 until his death in 1967, Arghese writes whatever he wants, no longer beholden to the communist authorities. Yet, it is as if they do not see this. Um, he is in their blind spot. He has developed an aura and is applauded now for poems which would have had him banned ten years earlier. I very much love his love poems written late in life with a particular type of nostalgia where, as Alex Stefanescu puts it, the scent of the flowers mixes with the smoke of the candles both on the way to the cemetery. Late in life, his poems have the feel of a tired jeweler's masterpieces. The old tradesman seems tired. You can sense the sighs for the aches and pains. But still, out of his tired hand sprout beautifully fashioned diamonds. I'll recite for you four uh, poems. Yes, Arghese is one of the few poets uh, who are represented with four poems, the maximum, in uh, Testament 400 years of Romanian poetry. I will start with a bittersweet ballad, Never Has the Autumn, where the aching is all you have and the aching is all you want and you cannot ever let go of it. Then comes, of course, Arghese's signature piece, Testament, one of the most significant poems ever written in uh, the Romanian literature and the inspiration for the title of my volume. The poem is not just Arghese's artistic manifesto. Sure, it is, uh, but it also provided a significant shift in poetry in the Carpathian country. Like, I do not crush the crown of this world's wonders by uh, Lucian Blaga and like the silver fang boar by Doi Nash. Testament has been the bane of uh, high school students for the last 60 years, so for their sake we must have it. Next is Psalm 4, a typical example of Arghese's struggle with divinity. And finally, one of the tired jeweler period, a diamond called You Had Just Left. As usual, the English renditions of all four poems will come first, followed by the Romanian. Never has the autumn. Never has the autumn seemed so fair and glowing to our souls which yearning towards death will fade. Silken rug the field is, pale, clear and flowing. For the clouds, the trees are weaving their brocade. Houses, like old pictures strung together, quiver. Fragrant wine spread cover thick inside their clay. Lain in this blue heaven of the sun-burnt river, from whose dirty mire gold we drank all day. Black birds in the sunset raise like sickly leaves of the hornbeam, ancient, whiter in its hue. Losing all its plumage, shaking as it gives a farewell to the blue. He who wants to weep and he who wants to blame, come and hear this urging, strange and lonely gong. And with eyes now glued on poplar's holy flame, bury their own shadow in their shadow's song. 
Testament. I won't leave much to you beyond my death. A name inside a book, perhaps, a breath. In the rebellious evening that ensues, as my ancestors sent to you their dues, through pits and furrows deep, scaled by my old folk in an angry creep, that now await you youthful climb be done, this book is but a simple step, my son. Set it in faith as first and foremost guide, and never put this holy writ aside, for it belongs to slaves with loaded bales of ancient bones through me becoming tales. So that we're now translating in a blink, spade into pen and furrow into ink, my old folk gathered from amongst the snares toils perspiration for a thousand years. And from their brogue with proddings for the herd, some fitting words I issued, undeterred. Cribs for the master's progeny to come, and needed for a thousand weeks, till numb, I altered them in verse and icon true, from rags to flower buds and crowns for you. The venom into honey to transform, preserving all its powers, sweetly, warm. I took derision, spinning it demure, and made it sometimes curse and sometimes lure. The hearth, the dead one's ashes, fire grown, I took it and I made it god of stone. A mighty border with two worlds in tow, guarding your duty speak and all you know. Our deaf, our deaf and bitter pain, a deadly spin, I crammed it on a single violin, that as he listened, promptly learned to dance the master like a slaughtered goat in trance. From sores and musty, muddy mold, I sprouted beauties, meanings new from old. The suffered whip is turning into words and slowly saves with chastening from my scroll the living offspring from the crime of all. The righteousness of an obscure old twig springing to light from forests dark and big, blooming on top a bunch of warts asunder, the fruit of suffering, an ancient wonder. Upon her couch, so lazily now lying, the princess in my book is suffering, crying. The writ of fire and the writ created, paired up, inside my book are married, mated. Like grippers hugging iron, hot and strong, writ by the slave, the master reads it wrong, suspecting not that deep within its pages my forebear's wrath silently rages. Psalm 4 I'm splitting you in noise and in calm and stalking you as if you were some game to see, are you the hawk I wish to claim? To kill you now? Or kneel to pray a psalm? Be it in faith, be it in doubtful leap, I seek you steadfast, yet without a goal. You are my dream, your beauty to extol, and I don't dare to topple you from heaven in a heap. Like mirrors in the water's paths that fade, you now exist, you're now gone like a wish. I see you in the stars, among the fish, like the wild bull that's drinking in the shade. 
in your grand story we are a simple quiz to fight against you that's why i remain without intent the victory to gain i want to feel you and to scream he is you had just left you had just left i begged you to depart my gaze had followed you along the winding path you vanished on the trail with clover lined not even once you turned to look behind i would have, I would have waved at you as you were going but What's a wave from the shadows distant blowing? I wanted you to go and yet to stay. You followed my first thought and walked away. My wordless plea to stop was all in vain. Why did you go? But why would you remain? Niciodată toamna Niciodată toamna nu fu mai frumoasă sufletului nostru bucuros de moarte. Palid așternut e șesul de mătasă. Norilor, copacile urzesc brocarte. Casele adunate ca niște urcioare cu vin îngroșat pe fundul lor de lut, stau pe țărmul albastru al râului de soare din mocirla cărui aur am băut. Păsările negre suie spre apus, ca frunza bolnava carpenului sur, ce se desfrunzește, scuturând în sus, Foile de azur. Cine vrea să plângă, cine să bocească, vie să asculte îndemnul neînțeles și cu ochii în falca plopilor cerească să-și îngroape umbra în umbra lor în șes. Testament nu-ți voi lăsa drept bunuri după moarte decât un nume adunat pe o carte. În seara răzvrătită care vine de la străbunii mei până la tine, prin râp și grope adânci, suite de bătrânii mei pe stânci și care tânăr să le urci te așteaptă, cartea mea e fiule o treaptă. Așează-o cu credință căpătâi, ea E Hristovul vostru cel din tâi, al robilor cu saricile pline de o semintele vărsate în mine. Ca să schimbăm acum, întâia oară, sapa în condei și brazda în călimară, bătrânii au adunat printre plăvani sudoarea și sutelor de ani. Din graiul lor cu îndemnuri pentru vite, eu am ivit cuvinte potrivite și leagăne urmașilor stăpâni. Și frământate mii de săptămâni le-am prefăcut în versuri și icoane, făcui din zdrențe, muguri și coroane. Veninul strâns l-am preschimbat în miere, lăsând întreaga dulcea lui putere. Am luat o cara. Și, torcând ușure, am pus-o când să bie, când să înjure. Am luat cenușa morților din vatră și am făcut-o Dumnezeu de piatră. Hotar înalt, cu două lumi pe poale, păzind în piscul datoriei tale. Durerea noastră, surdă și amară, o grămădi pe o singură vioară pe care ascultându-o a jucat stăpânul ca un țap înjunghiat. Din bube, mucegaiuri și noroi, 
iscata în frumuseți și prețuri noi. Biciul, Biciul răbdat se întoarce în cuvinte și izbăvește încet pedepsitor o draslavia crimei tuturor. E îndreptățirea ramurei obscure, ieșită la lumină din pădure și dând în vârf, ca un ciorchin de negi, rodul durerii de vecii întregi. Întinsă leneșă pe canapea, domnița suferă în cartea mea. Slova de foc și slova făurită, împerecheată în carte semărită, ca fierul cald îmbrățișat în clește, robul a scris-o, domnul o citește, fără a cunoaște că în adâncul ei zace mânia bunilor mei. Psalm 4 Te drămuiesc în zgomot și tăcere și te pândesc în timp ca pe vânat să văd ești șoimul meu cel căutat să te ucid sau să îngenunchi a cere. Pentru credință sau pentru tăgadă te caut dârz și fără de folos. Ești visul meu din toate cel frumos și nu îndrăznesc să te dobor din cer grămadă. Ca în oglindirea unui drum de apă, par când a fi, par când că nu mai ești, te întrezări în stele, printre pești, ca taurul sălbatec când se adapă. Singuri, acum, în marea ta poveste, rămân cu tine să mă mai măsor, fără să vreau să ies biruitor. Vreau să te pipăi și să urlu, este! Te-abia plecasești. De-abia plecasești, te-am rugat să pleci. Te urmăream de-a lungul molate cipoteci până ai pierit la capăt prin trifoi. Nu te-ai uitat odată înapoi. Ți-aș fi făcut un semn după plecare, dar ce un semn din umbră în depărtare? Vroiam să pleci Vroiam și să rămâi, ai ascultat de gândul cel din tâi. Nu te oprise gândul fără glas. De ce ai plecat? De ce ai mai fi rămas?